What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Mia J, and I'm with my beautiful bestie. Pamela Nicole, what's up, y'all? And this is another episode of Dynasty Queen. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome back, you guys, to the Dynasty House. Pamela, let's we'll get right into it, okay? No time to waste. In a world of unreliable MFs, I'm going to say it again. In a world of unreliable MFs, how can we ever depend on anybody to do anything at any time, any place, anywhere? Pam. People that's the, that's the picture of the hour. People of the day. Days are not worth a damn. Pamela, I need you to, to go ahead and school the viewers and let the people watching know about a particular person or moment in time or situation. And we're probably gonna have so many of these within this particular episode, you guys, of when somebody just really played you, belittled you after you did X, Y, and Z for this person, and they were just so ungrateful. What is a moment that comes to mind? <laughs> Girl, I could write a book. Like, just just for the viewers, I, just full transparency, my biggest pet peeve is my time wasted. I cannot deal with people wasting my time. Time is so valuable. Time is so precious. That shit you can't get back, okay? I don't like wasting stuff that I can't get back. So, with me, I would have to say, girl, oh my God. Just out here in Vegas, it's unreliability is like the state nickname, I would say. Um, I've gotten to shoots before. I've planned ahead. As you know, I plan ahead at least six weeks in advance. My planner is my Bible. I have everything written out. Dates circled, everything ready, done. I had to go out to, remember when we went out to Valley of Fire? Yes. Way out there in the boonies. I do. The nether regions of the desert. So I had to drive out there. So mind you, it's about an hour, I'd say an hour or so outside of Vegas. Mm -hmm. So I'm driving out there. Mind you, I don't have, there's no chargers out there for me to charge my car. I'm just out in the fucking desert. Okay. And I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting for this photographer to come through. Like, okay, I'm hitting them up. Like, I know I'm going to run out of like reception somewhere. There's going to be a little pocket. Didn't hear from this man. I was out there 90 minutes. Because I'm like, you know what? Maybe there was an accident. I try to give people the benefit of the doubt in like a realistic way. Like if you're traveling, I'm going to give you a little bit of grace. Because like I said, there could have been an accident. Something could have happened. You're running late. Cool. I'm cool with all those things. But for you to just not show up. And I got a whole suitcase in the back. I got all my makeup. I got everything I need for a shoot. And it's hot as fuck in the middle of the desert. Nah, fam. Yeah. So that's when I have a list of photographers I do not work with. If they try to hit me up with some, oh, my bad. Nah, that is your bad. Because guess what? You're not working with me. I don't ever give anybody second chances. Like, I just, you fucked up the first time. That's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? You know what they say. First impressions are everything. And I really think like when it comes to business relationships, especially somebody like a photographer who builds their pretty much their entire, you know, uh, database or entire clientele base based off of relationship and networking. You know, if there are going to be rumors like, oh, you know, like you said, I'm not going to work with these specific photographers, right? And if you really wanted to be crude or if you wouldn't really wanted to get your get back, you could blast them right now on the podcast. I mean, you know what I mean? But look, at the end of the day, your reputation when you're in business, it speaks volumes. Yelp reviews mm -hmm. speak volumes. If it's some under the table stuff that people are gossiping and talking, which is the old school Yelp, that speaks volumes. You know what I mean? So I don't understand why someone of such you know, a profession would even carry themselves in that type of manner. It's just really disgusting. It is. My thing is, I, I here's the psychology of it. And I think about things this way. If you make plans to work with somebody, and this is just any field, it doesn't have to be like photography or like the entertainment industry. Yeah. Any, any um, 
job or whatever, if you approach a person and you make that effort, you take that time, effort, and energy to communicate with this person, and then you don't see value like towards like I guess the end point or like when you get to that point where you're like, oh, you know what? Hmm, I don't know. That's where communication comes in. You need to speak to this person, be like, you know what? I had a change of heart or I want to go a different direction. First of all, you can see if that person's willing to go that different direction. Secondly, if that's not the case, just be upfront. I don't understand what it is, why people have to waste other people's time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And really it's the common courtesy. Like if I have a scheduled appointment, if it only, if it was an absolute emergency under duress and you know, somebody's child was just injured or their loved one or spouse or parent, whatever, you know, something like that, where some tragedy is taking place or some, you know, somewhere that they're not able to get to where they need to be. Okay. There really is nothing I can do about that. However, if you're lollygagging around and you either wake up late or forgot that you had uh, a pre-planned event scheduled on that same day, or if you double booked, that is not my problem. That. And happy on the last one, because, you know, a lot of professionals, whether it be cosmetology or whatever the field is, will be like, oh, I'm so sorry, but I double book. That is, once again, <laughs> that's not my problem. You know? That's a you problem. That's a you <laughs> problem. So in order for you to build clientele and help build your portfolio and your business, you have to get your matters in order. Because, ladies and gentlemen, all of that matters. People are talking. If you are a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur and you want your reputable name and you're on social media and have advertisement, all this stuff, please be mindful. Internet leaves that print, that timestamp when you leave that Yelp review. But damn, Mm -hmm. word of mouth has been the talk of the town since the start of time. You know what I mean? So People are going to talk about you good, bad or indifferent. So I just think it's great to give people the common courtesy. And, you know, I think a lot of people, unfortunately, they feel either embarrassed if, you know, like, for example, for talk, for double book, whatever, or just, you know, say, forget it, you know, forget it altogether. Or they just simply don't care. And the second one is just, it's so disrespectful beyond, like, (laughs) beyond reasoning. It's just like so disrespectful to me. That's like, you know, another example, I have planned events, I've planned parties. I've had people text me 10 minutes before the party, 10 minutes before the event and say, I'm not going to be able to make it. You knew you weren't going to be able to make it. You should have at least said something at least a day before, a week before, or if you weren't sure when you got the invitation Oh, you know, let me think about it. I'll get back to you. Exactly. Let me think about it. See, for me, if if you actually lock in the RSVP or you said I'm going to be there, because I'm the type of person, if I'm not sure, I'll be like, oh, there's a possibility. But then again, you may not see my face. And then I'll let you know morning of the event. I'm not I'm officially not going to make it. But never right. in my life have I actually, you know, went ahead and RSVP'd and not showed up or not been present. Even if I was late, I still made my presence known, even if it was for 45 minutes, an hour, just to pay my respect, whether it be a baby shower, you know, whatever the event is, a bachelorette party, you know, graduation, because there's so many different type of things that we do, you know, in um, whether it be business or casual. Now, question, and then we're going to get back to the business side of it. Yeah. Do you think that family and friends feel they can kind of, you know, have more uh, of an advantage of wasting our time opposed to business folk. Do they feel like I have an excuse, like if your sister, your cousin, your mom, oh, well, I'm not going to make it this time, even after locking in or whatever it is, or you were supposed to have a movie date with your mom or go get your nails done with, you know, your cousin or whatever it was. Do, does family think they have a pass? They think they do, but depending on your boundary is how you navigate that. So for me personally, 
family is just like everybody else. If I make a reservation somewhere and you are expected to be there and they give away my table because you didn't show up because that's how it works and that's their company policy and then I'm not eating, I'm not. Don't expect me to invite you nowhere else. I don't care if you're friend, family, business. I don't care. Like, it is all literally the same if you think about it. What about you? Like, as far as your boundaries, if somebody, like, say, you know, you're going somewhere and it's like, oh, dang, I'm not feeling good. Or dang, like, why don't we reschedule day of? Yeah. What what would be your response to that? Unless, like I said, unless it's um, an urgent emergency where, you know, a car wreck or you're, you know, vomiting yeah. and something really, really bad happened. Other than that, get your ass up and come to the event. Okay. You are SVP. Like you said, we have to pre-plan. So if it's, it's a, if it's an event that has like alcohol or something, we had to buy an abundance of X, Y, Z. If it's whatever it is, like you said, reserving a table, whatever it is, please be mindful that headcount is for a reason. Okay. Most of the time that RSVP is for a reason. Because money is involved in these types of things, right? So you're telling me I wasted my money and your ass didn't show up to the event, but you are SVP a month and a half ago. Am I that much of a non-priority to you? Now, let me add in a little extra, a little pizzazz to this. I've actually had somebody sell me $50 to um, cover her meal because she wasn't going to come. Okay. But the but the the excuse and this was a whole excuse cuz she had just posted on her story. So I already saw like she was out in the back pool like yeah. do you. Right. My mental's not right for me to go to your event. But here's $50 to compensate. So I don't know what's more disrespectful, the lying and seeing clearly that you're you're doing great, you're having a good time elsewhere, or the disrespect of just sending me the money like here, maybe like this is like it, we're we're even basically. Or even better we're yet, even. the disrespect of putting the post on social media, knowing y'all were friends and that you would probably more than likely see it and you know uncover her lie. She blatantly did not care. So that's not a real friend. Whoever that, I don't know who that person is. I don't think I know. I'm pretty sure I no. do, but maybe we didn't have that conversation. But regardless, no. I just, now at the end of the day, I can forgive that person because they sent me some bread. So I'm like, okay, you know, for me, money does talk, but I the best <laughs> of friends. But no, I'm sorry. It's not happening. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. But like, what's an example for you, like going back to the business side, what is something that like, I guess not so much super triggering, but triggering enough to like speak on it. Girl, it happens all the time. It happens all the time because guess what? I'm a casting agent, right? Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. So I'm always in a position where I have to find replacements for gigs. If I book somebody for an acting role, let's say, for example, or a music video or a commercial or whatever it is. I have so many talent, right? And oftentimes I'm also on set as a production assistant helping the production crew with, you know, making sure all the talent arrive on time or in specific groups, making sure they have their scripts and stuff, making sure they, you know, come dressed apart for the role and that their headspace is in the right place. It is so, ooh, what is the word I'm looking for? Mm. It is very discouraging and it is, it just, it irks my nerves when people cancel last minute. If you clearly said you were available for the gig and then you didn't have to be on set at 10 a.m., it's 9.45 or even worse, the phone, the, the phone goes straight to voicemail or oh, it's no longer ooh. accepting calls. So you block me. Just please be mindful, people. You are going to get on a black ball list in the industry and people are not going to want to work with you. And we talk to other casting agencies. So guess what? You will not be working on anybody's set with that type of mentality. That hurts my nerves so bad, girl. So bad. Hey guys, it's Pamela Nicole from Dynasty Queens, and I'm here today to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, socialmediablastop.net. 
If you're out here as an entrepreneur, an artist, a model, you name it, and you're trying to get your business off the ground, they got you covered. Whether you're on social media platforms such as Instagram, X, Facebook, or if you're an artist, if you're on uh, wanting to get on platforms such as Spotify, Apple Music, or Amazon Music, socialmediablastoff.net has you covered. Since you're new to the game, go ahead and save 30% on your purchase with socialmediablastoff.net and get your business going. Go ahead and scan that QR code right down here and got you all set. Let me ask you another question. Cancel culture and quit culture. I don't know if you've heard of the term quit culture, but that is running rampant with these 20 somethings and young 30 something. What's it called? Where's quit culture? So basically saying someone say, for example, someone starts a job and they're just not feeling it. Mm -hmm. They just stop showing up. Oh, yeah. You leave the company at risk for things. You, you're you just unreliable. And at that point, they don't have a plan B. So they have to come out of the work to do what they need to do to fix whatever damage you've done. But that has been a thing where people just, oh, I'm not feeling it. Let me find another job. And just, it's my time. It's my time to waste it. It's a very selfish act. So I really feel like a lot of these Oh, what what is it? Gen Z, Gen what 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 are these kids? I think no. I think we're millennials are considered Gen Y. So yeah, they're Gen Z. They're Gen, Gen Z. Mm-hmm. It's the the cancel and quit culture, and it has become a stigma. It has become a norm, and I don't feel it's right for like the older crew to just kind of be desensitized by it, be like, oh, it happens. Mm-hmm. Like it, it shouldn't be that way because. Yeah. When did this, you know what I mean? You know, it's a lot of factors and this would actually kind of lead into another totally different topic, but it has a lot to do with the parenting. A lot of the kids that are Gen Z, they have parents that are older millennials that may may have had them in their teen years or in, you know, not the most desirable conditions. These are babies post the crack epidemic, it's all kind of things that come into play, you know, with the shaping of the culture and how this generation are not only were we from the era of the two-week notice because our parents were boomers and of course there's no other way. You know, our our parents had typewriters back in the day. They were going to resign from a little job or quit. Even if it was a little high school gig, you still got to put a notice in or something or, you know, give people a heads up. Even if it's a week, something, you know, if it's a sense of urgency where you have to to go. But, you know, people these days, it's just, oh, I just won't show up to work, you know, and it's just it's very distasteful. And it makes millennials look bad because some of the even older are going to group all of us together and be like, well, you know, anybody under 45 is can get this smoke. (laughs) Like we don't like any of you. You know, and it's just not like that because we're so different. I've never, I think that our generation has a more close connection to Gen X. And then there's a distance from X to Boomer. So maybe that happens every other generation where two are kind of more like in sync. And then after that is, it's so different. And we were that group where we are so different from this Gen X. It's, it's, just one, it's one word that separates us from that and its integrity. Mm, absolutely. That is what separates Man. the younger crowd from the slightly seasoned crowd, if you will. Right. Girl. I'm never, unless I'm put it in a position where you're giving me that, just giving me points and points where I have to just be like, you know what, I'm out. Mm-hmm. Stop disrespecting me to the max and I'm I'm not dealing with it. Okay. Right. But if it's like a situation where it's like, oh, I'm having a bad day, I don't feel like doing this today, that's not a reason to just up and quit a job. Exactly. Like, do you not have bills to pay? Do you like I just don't understand? Don't understand. Don't. And you know, it's really it's just so unfortunate. But you know what else? That is also very disrespectful. I've heard some of the, you know, the groups that are a little bit older than us. Say the kids these days, they don't say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, you know, all that good stuff. They're saying, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I forgot where I was, but I heard a group of 
Oh, I was I was in court over a little traffic ticket situation a couple months ago. And the black female judge, she was up there and, you know, it was a plethora of different type of age groups, races and ethnicities, all that good stuff within the courtroom. But one young man, he came to the podium and she was, you know, asking him to go over the details of his situation or whatever. And when she asked him specific questions, he was like, yeah. And then her bailiff was like, hey, you don't talk to judge so-and-so. And she's like, you know what? She's like, she looked at him, she smiled. <laughs> she was really cool. She looked at him, she was like, you know what? That's the difference. That's that Gen Z. She's like, I can't even get, she looked at him, I can't even get mad at them. Like, I cannot even get mad at them because that's a different generation. It's not even his fault. It's okay. She told the bailiff, it's okay. Mm-hmm. The bailiff was like, so it's a disconnect because these it is. were not taught manners. They were not taught to respect their elders. They were not taught to respect the workplace. I get it that we kind of birthed, like our generation kind of birthed that entrepreneurial spirit. Like, hey, I want to get it out the mud. I want to, you know, look at other alternatives yeah. after college or maybe let's bypass it all together. And then Gen Z ran with that because it's the age of social media, all kind of different things are happening. So I get that. However, integrity, like you said, it it carries you very far. It does. Integrity carries you very far. The same as your reliability. So yeah. You just won't be successful without either. That. Not long. But you know, it's kind of like, I'm just kind of like flabbergasted with what she said. She said it's okay. For me personally, I don't know, sis. Like, I'm at a point and it might be like that turning point where, you know, you get to an age where you're just like, I, I really don't want to have to deal with this. I will DoorDash before I go to a drive through I will pay a little extra convenience fee to not deal with the bullshit. I don't want a rude ass person. Yeah. What do you want? Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, we're out of that. I, To me, I just don't feel like having that ugly ass energy when I'm trying to enjoy my meal. Like, I, I don't want to deal with it. So I'm thankful and grateful. DoorDash, you know, y'all. Okay. Talk to us. Right. <laughs> we love it. You know <laughs> but I will really go out of my way because I already know what it is. You know what I mean? I don't have to deal with that. Just drop my food off and I will enjoy my meal by myself. Exactly. In front of TV, watch Netflix and not have to deal with any of that extra. extra. Exactly. And it's so sad because we can probably count on our hands the fast food chains, not even one whole hand, not even three fingers. The fast food chains that teach that great customer service. And, you know, we already know who's the top of the list. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like, and then you think of some other places and you're just like, you know, it's going to be trouble. I mean, you just know you're not going to have a good experience. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and start, start it off. Chick-fil-A, you know you're going to have a good experience. Like, every time. My pleasure. Like, you know, it's, they give you the experience. So, you know, yeah. and just the whole thing. They have the whole process is in order. Any location you go to across the country. And their headquarters are in Atlanta, you know. So, I just find it really fascinating with how the guy who founded the company he set his core principles or whatever, and you know, also his religious values as well. And he really built something, you know, and it's a model that other businesses really need to follow because that name, that brand carries Chick-fil-A further than McDonald's when it comes to the experience. And quality and everything. And then when I think of a place, you know, some of are kind of like a middle ground, like there's some good McDonald's, some bad, same with Burger King and all those places, but when you think of a place that you know is going to be bad, maybe not the food, but the customer service, like a Popeye's, like those are the people you don't want to deal with. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to have to disagree with you on that. The Popeye's here, the people are phenomenal, phenomenal. Like I don't think I've ever had a bad experience in Vegas at a Popeye's. My restaurant that I have... Oh, um, Pizza Hut, really? Sonic. Oh, Sonic yes, is bad in any state. Oh, it's always yeah. they're missing something or their inventory. Oh, I don't, we don't have any straws. We don't have any sauce. Can I get marinara sauce for the? Che- no, we don't have any sauce. Can I? Do y'all have chili cheese hot dog? No, we just have hot dogs and buns. We don't even have ketchup or salt. 
or oh, for, we forgot to put your order in. Or it's always really something with Sonic. Let me tell you my last Sonic experience. So it was two weeks ago. I go in. I did like got a Sonic Blast, and then they forgot my straw. So I hit the button again. I was just like waiting. They had me on there ten minutes waiting. The guy comes back on. <sighs> did you need something else? Actually, yeah, I didn't get a straw. Oh, all right. Then I guess we'll bring it out. You guess. Girl, I was just like, who the hell do you think you're talking to? Like, if you hate your job, go find something else. Pam. That's all the thing. You can always tell when someone is just not feeling it. Pam. No, look, that's bad, right? In Atlanta. Cool. In Atlanta and the surrounding cities. You can pull up to a Sonic or, and it's a couple rest not restaurants, but fast food chains that are pretty notorious out here. Sometimes it would be McDonald's, sometimes it would be Burger King, sometimes, a lot of times Sonic. When you drive yeah. up to some Burger Kings out here, they'll say, oh, we're only taking um, Dash Door, or, I mean DoorDash right now. Oh, we're only doing Uber Eats. Just any excuse not to work. Or they'll just put sign, oh, we just don't feel like working. So um, just putting, you know, signs that they're closed and all kind of like foolery, like, it happens out here. Like, it's bad. That <laughs> a ghetto mess. A ghetto mess. All I can imagine is someone going out to the drive through sign, writing out a sign, like, we're out of this, or our water's not working, or something crazy. And it's the, the <laughs> sad thing is sometimes it's that, but sometimes they're just in there just cutting up. They don't want to work. But they're on the clock. That's why. Why would you only be taking DoorDash and Uber Eats? That doesn't make any sense. They don't, they don't, they, they're not feeling it. And at that point, do you feel, okay, if you were um, an owner operator of like a fast food business, do you feel that there are certain, I guess, I can say psychological questions or certain types of questions to give someone during the hiring process? Do you feel like when they go and they fill out, like, what's your experience? You know, um, what motivates you? Why do you feel like you're a good fit for this job? Do you, what other questions do you feel would or need to be required to be asked of someone that's trying to get hired? Um, just so you can weed out the good and the bad and know, like, who your good employees would be. They probably need to give them the same test they give people that are going into more of, like, the corporate setting, you know, the... Um trying to fill out your personality. A lot of these companies give you that personality exam to see where it place you as far as, you know, how goal oriented you'll be or how, you know, strong, I mean, how hard you'll work to finish a task. And are you going to be, you know, on time? And then are you going to ask for help? Do you like to work solo or with others? The kind of stuff they ask in those type of job settings, they probably need to sprinkle some of that down to the fast food. But here's the thing, the turnover rate is so high. I don't think these companies care unless you have like the managers and stuff and the district managers, those levels have to be more on a professional slate. Like, okay, you got a degree to back it up or you've done this, that, and the third, you have to have experience. But we know very well that most of the people that are working the front lines of these fast food chains are teenagers. Mm -hmm. Our very generation true. are the parents of teenagers. And we know how our generation was growing up. And we went through some of the same things with fast food restaurants then. These are our kids now, and it's worse. Mm -hmm. So it a perpetual is. cycle. It is. Oh, yeah. God. What? <laughs> I just, I'm still stuck on the, let's put the sign out. No. Yes. Girl. Just welcome to Atlanta. This is wild. Yeah, like, it's just really disturbing. Like, like I said, credibility is everything. Your integrity is everything. Your reputation should mean something to you. If you're in business or even if you're working, you know, in a place, because nowadays people can actually, if you're giving bad service, they can start recording you and that shit can go viral. And there's a lot of people that get fired because of that, a viral video. It's a whole nother, you know, route. A whole different topic. <laughs> right. But, you know, it can all link to this because people are talking, yeah. people are watching, people are recording you, people are listening, people are leaving date and timestamp reviews. There are so many ways that people can really drag you under the bus because of what you did. 
in the first place. So at the end of the day, please, guys, let's be a little bit more reliable, a little bit more understanding of people's time. Let's not waste folks' time. Can the church say amen? Like, let's not waste people's time because time is money. That. My money. That. And again, also, you can't get that back. Right. The time so that that's... You know, that's an experience that you missed out on. That's, you know, that's a lesson. That's, you know, like Nia said, money that you missed out on. Yes. For what reason? For what reason? You you weren't feeling it. (laughs) You might think from now on. Okay. Girl, we can go on and on about this all day. But I know we really want the viewers to chime in. Guys, leave comments. Make sure you like and subscribe. Um, tell us about a situation where you really felt you really felt played or you felt, you know, disrespected, um, whether it be business, family, friends, you know, let's open up the forum and let's hear what you guys have to say. Um, you know, it's just like I said, once again, we want change in the world. Gen Z needs to be shaken and slapped a few times and beat. So that's the way corporal punishment out of the schools. That's a whole other topic. Thank <laughs> you mm-hmm. for that's a whole other thing. You know, really whipping these kids into shape to understanding these kids are our future. They will be the future adults. And something's got to give. There has to be a type of change. There has to be some type of consequences behind these folks' action for them to understand that, hey, as you move through life, your integrity, your word, what you bring to the table means everything. Pam, can you please close us out? Absolutely, honey. Like Mia said, go ahead. Spill your tea. I know y'all got some stories for us. We want to read them in the comments. But until next time, guys, it was a pleasure. I am Pamela Nicole, and I've got my beautiful bestie, Nia J, baby. And this is Dynasty Queens. Thank you.